have you ever like found yourself staring at that blank screen right after installing Proxmox? It kind of feels like you're about to launch your own little spaceship from the garage, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Every single choice feels huge. Totally. Yeah. CPU, RAM, everything. But, you know, if you're anything like me, or probably lots of you listening, there's this one decision that seems to consistently trip people up. Uh, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, that moment where you have to pick between ZFS and LVM thin for your storage. Yeah. It can really make or break the whole setup, can it? Absolutely. And look, it's easy to kind of get it mixed up at first. They both talk about snapshots, flexibility. Sounds similar, right? Superficially, maybe. But honestly, that's pretty much where the similarities stop. So today, our mission, our deep dive here, is really to cut through all the noise, the marketing stuff, and unpack what actual users are saying. What's the real experience? Send a brass tax. Exactly. Yeah. We want to give you a genuine shortcut, you know, so mm. you feel really well informed when you're making that choice for your own Proxmox build build with confidence, basically. And you're hitting on such a crucial point there. This isn't just some minor setting you check off during install. Right, it feels bigger. It is bigger. This storage backend choice, it's gonna fundamentally shape your whole Proxmox experience for years, potentially. Wow, okay. Yeah, it dictates how your server runs day to day. We're talking performance, data resilience, the whole shebang. Now, it's great that both give you snapshots. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love an undo button? <laughs> oh, yeah. Save me more times than I can count. Experimenting without fear. Exactly. Yeah. But under the hood, these are like fundamentally different creatures. They each have their own unique strengths, absolutely, mm -hmm. but also some pretty significant uh, potential pitfalls. Okay. All right. Let, let's maybe dive into ZFS first then. Yeah. It always gets called the feature-packed heavyweight. Yeah. yeah. Seems to have this really passionate following in the Proxmox world. People rave about it being the everything storage solution. But is it, like, really all that? Or is it sometimes a bit overhyped? Well, that enthusiasm. It's often well-deserved, honestly, for what it can do. But you're right to question it. We definitely need to balance the praise with some of the, let's say, common points of friction. Okay. But first, let's just acknowledge why people get so passionate. I saw one user put it really well. They said something like, ZFS is faster and more reliable. Compression alone makes it worth it. Compression. Okay, so it saves space. Exactly. That transparent compression they're talking about, it's a huge plus. It automatically cuts down your disk usage, really stretches that expensive SSD space further, and it does it pretty much invisibly in the background. Huh. Okay, so saving space is good. What else gets ZFS users so fired up? What are the other big wins? Well, okay, think about replication. This is huge. ZFS has this incredible built-in ability to snapshot your data and then, like, effortlessly send it to another machine. So like a backup. It's more than just a basic backup. Think instant disaster recovery. You can literally clone your entire server state almost in real time to another box with minimal fuss. That's a critical safety net, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Then there's the caching, advanced caching. They call it ARC. It cleverly uses your system RAM to keep frequently accessed files handy, which can seriously speed up read operations. Ah, so it's faster for things you use a lot. Precisely. And for those of you out there who just love to tinker, who want to fine tune every little setting, ZFS gives you tons of options. Plus, and this is really vital, it does self-healing checksums, data integrity. Okay, self-healing checksums. That sounds pretty robust, uh, but break that down a bit. What exactly is silent data corruption and why is ZFS supposedly so good at stopping it? Yeah, great question. So silent data corruption for anyone listening who hasn't run into this nightmare isn't like when a file obviously breaks and gives you an error. Wait, it's not obvious. No, it's insidious. It's when your data subtly changes, maybe a bit flips on your drive or there's a glitch in memory, but there's no warning. Nothing tells you what happened. Yikes. Yeah, and this can cause really weird problems down the line apps misbehaving, maybe even your whole OS getting unstable. ZFS fights this by calculating checksums, like little digital fingerprints, for all your data and metadata. When you read data back, ZFS recalculates the checksum and compares like it. Checks its work. Exactly. If they don't match, it knows something's wrong. Corruption has happened. And here's the cool part. If you've set up redundancy, like with mirroring, ZFS can often automatically heal the corruption using a good copy. It's like having a constant, vigilant guardian watching over your bits and bytes. That is genuinely powerful. Okay. But every heavyweight has a weak spot, right? What are the common complaints? What do people gripe about with ZFS? Absolutely. And the main one, you hear it over and over, memory consumption. RAM. Ah, uh, the RAM issue. Yeah. That sophisticated caching, 
the constant integrity checks, they really, really chew through RAM. If you don't have, say, 16 gigs or ideally even more dedicated to it, you're probably going to hit slowdown sometimes. Users talk about weird performance dips. It just demands a significant chunk of your system resources to really sing. 16 gigs. Wow. Okay. That's quite a bit for just storage. It can be, yeah. And here's another real-world warning sign we've seen crop up. Consumer SSDs. One user reported ZFS's trim feature, which is supposed to help SSDs maintain performance, was actually hammering their Samsung consumer drive. Hammering how? Basically using up its write endurance cycles much, much faster than they expected. Now, the deep technical reasons are complex, but the key takeaway for you is if you plan to use ZFS on a regular consumer SSD, not an enterprise one, keep a really close eye on that drive's health metrics. ZFS might wear it out faster than you think. Good to know. Any other downsides? Well, it can be complex. Getting under the hood, tuning it, there's a learning curve. And if you're running Proxmox on like a low power seller on NUC or something, that CPU might struggle, especially if you turn on heavier features like deduplication or really aggressive compression. Right, makes sense. Okay, so is ZFS is the fancy, feature-packed, maybe slightly temperamental chef's knife. I kind of like that. And LVM thin is more like, what? A really good, solid utility blade. Exactly, that's a great analogy. Simple, clean, does the job, and it's way less demanding on your hardware. You see it a lot with users who just want minimal overhead and really predictable performance. Yeah, I saw a quote. Someone said, LVM is faster and has less overhead. It's designed to be a block storage protocol. Nailed it. And its advantages are pretty compelling, especially for certain setups. Like what? What's the big appeal? Simplicity, mainly. Its low resource usage is huge. You can run Proxmox smoothly on older kit, tiny mini PCs, whatever. It frees up that precious RAM for your actual VMs, mm. not the storage system underneath. So less RAM needed overall. Much less. And it uses dynamic allocation thin provisioning, basically. It only uses disk space as your VMs actually write data. Super efficient. Okay. Performance is generally really fast, especially since it doesn't have that constant overhead of compression or checksumming that ZFS does. And crucially, it still gives you easy snapshots. You can snap your VMs without taking them offline, just like ZFS. So still got the safety net. Still got the snapshot safety net, yeah. It really shines in you know single server setups, maybe a modest home lab where you value simplicity and speed above all else. You mentioned that quote about it being a uh block storage protocol. Yeah. Can you unpack that just a tiny bit for folks listening? What does that mean practically? Yeah, good call. So for you, the listener, thinking about block storage, essentially LVM Thin works directly with raw chunks or blocks of your storage device. Huh. It doesn't layer a complex file system on top in the same way ZFS does for managing the VM disks themselves. So it's more direct. Kind of, yeah. It's very efficient for VMs because it gives them something very close to raw disk access, which is often what they need for the best I.O. performance. Less translation, less overhead. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. But then, there's always a but, isn't there? <laughs> what are the downsides of this simpler approach with LVM Thin? Definitely downsides. And they can be real deal breakers depending on your goals. The absolute biggest one is the lack of built-in replication. Ah, uh, so no easy sending snapshots to another machine like ZFS. Nope, not built in, not easily. Uh. If you're planning a multi-node Proxmox cluster or you want automatic disaster recovery where your VMs can fail over to another server, LVM Thin makes that much harder. She can't do it. Well, you can replicate LVM thin volumes, but you have to set it up manually, use external tools, command line stuff. As one user pointed out, you can't just click a button in the friendly Proxmox UI. It means extra work, extra complexity, potential points of failure you have to manage yourself. Okay, that's a big difference. What else? The other crucial one, which we touched on, is no data checksumming. That silent data corruption we talked about with ZFS. Yeah, the scary background data rot. Exactly. LVM Thin doesn't have that built-in protection at the storage layer. It relies on higher levels, maybe the VM's own file system, to catch errors. So you're trading away some of that peace of mind, that intrinsic data reliability. So it's speed and simplicity versus data paranoia. Huh. Maybe a little bit. It's a clear trade-off. LVM Thin gives you speed, simplicity, low overhead. ZFS gives you advanced features, replication, and that robust, constant data integrity checking. You lose the latter with LVM Thin. Okay. So we've laid out the good, the bad, the features, the foibles. Now, the million-dollar question, right? How does someone listening figure out which one is actually right for them? Right. It really boils down to two things your hardware, what you've actually got to run this on, and maybe even more importantly, 
what are your priorities for this Proxmox server? What do you need it to do? Okay, so let's break that down. When is ZFS the obvious choice, like mm -hmm. a slam dunk, as you said? All right, ZFS is likely your winner if you've got at least 16 gigs of RAM, preferably more, and a reasonably decent CPU. You should also kind of enjoy tinkering and tuning your systems. The tweaker type. Yeah, exactly. Also, if you absolutely need that built-in snapshot replication to another Proxmox host for backups or high availability, if you really want compression to maximize your SSD space, or if data integrity is just non-negotiable, maybe you're running critical databases, important file servers, stuff you absolutely cannot afford to have silently corrupt. Okay. And importantly, you need to be willing to invest a bit of time learning the ZFS commands, understanding how to tune its memory usage. It rewards that effort, but it does require it. Got it. So lots of RAM, need replication, need integrity, like to tinker, that's ZHS territory. What about LVM Thin? When is that the clear winner? LVM Thin is probably the better fit if you're working with less RAM, say 8 gigs or even less, or if you just fundamentally prefer a set it and forget it kind of solution. Low maintenance. Very much so. If you prioritize simplicity over having every possible feature under the sun, if RAM is really tight, or honestly, if you just need reliable, fast block storage for your VMs on a single server, and you don't need the fancy replication or absolute maximum data integrity checks at the storage level. So simplicity, low RAM, single server, LVM thin. That's the core of it, yeah. It's the dependable workhorse. Gets the job done efficiently without a lot of fuss. Okay, so people have weighed the main pros and cons. Maybe they're leaning one way. Yeah. But for this deep drive, we should probably also touch on some of those like weirder edge cases, right? The oddball behaviors users sometimes report. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because theory is one thing. The real world always throws curveballs. So what kind of things come up? Well, with ZFS, you really do need to anticipate wrestling with that memory usage at some point. We've seen specific reports like users finding ZFS causing stuttering and other apps running on the host, like, say, RootTorrent, a BitTorrent client, yeah. even after they tried tweaking the ARC cache settings. Huh. So even tuning it doesn't always fix interference. It seems not always, or not easily. ZFS just wants that RAM, and if other things need it too, you can get contention. It's not always a perfectly behaved background process. Okay. And LVM thin. Any weird quirks there, despite its simplicity? Well, it's generally easier to live with day to day, for sure. But its limitations become quirks, depending on what you try to do later. The snapshots work great on the single host, yeah. But if you later decide you want live migration between servers or easy cluster replication, you're going to hit a wall. Because it doesn't have the built-in tool. Exactly. It just wasn't designed for that level of cluster integration in the same way ZFS was. And again, that lack of checksumming. It's yeah. not a quirk exactly, but it's a fundamental difference you accept. No safety net against bit rot at that level. Right. So how does this all line up with like the broader consensus? Outside of just Proxmox forums, what does the general Linux world think? It lines up pretty well, actually. The broader consensus is quite consistent. ZFS is almost universally acknowledged as, well, unbeatable for its data integrity features and that advanced toolkit. It's powerful. The heavyweight champ of features. Pretty much. LVM Thin, meanwhile, is respected for offering simpler, often faster storage, especially when you factor in the lower hardware demands. Benchmarks often show this, too. Places like Pharonix test this stuff all the time. And what do they show? Generally, ZFS excels at sequential stuff, writing big files, reading large chunks. But it can sometimes introduce a performance hit, especially with heavy random I.O., the kind VMs often do, particularly on consumer SSDs. We talked about that wear issue, but there can be latency impacts, too. Okay. LVM Thin, contrastingly, tends to perform more predictably across different workloads. It's often seen as the kind of better default for smaller servers, simpler deployments where you don't need all the ZFS bells and whistles or can't afford the RAM overhead. Okay, so wrapping this up then, it really sounds like, as usual in tech, there's no single right answer, no one size fits all. Not at all. It truly depends. If you're someone who loves having every tool, every option in your storage toolbox and, crucially, you have the RAM to feed ZFS properly. It seems like a fantastic choice. That combo of compression, replication, the self-healing checksums. It's hard to argue with for critical stuff. Absolutely. For peace of mind and features, it's top tier. But if you'd rather keep things simple, you want to avoid spending time tuning memory limits, and you just need speedy, straightforward storage for your VMs on one server. LVM Thin seems like the clear, sensible path. Yep. 
reliable, efficient, does the job. It really just comes down to what you prioritize, what your hardware can handle, and what you need your Proxmox box to do. And hey, whichever way you lean, the Proxmox community is huge. You'll find tons of guides, tons of people sharing what worked, what didn't. Definitely tap into that community resource. Yeah. So go ahead, make your choice, pick that storage back in, and start building out your Proxmox dream machine. The adventure really is half the fun. Well said. And maybe, just as a final thought to leave people with, beyond this specific choice, ZFS versus LVM Thin, what does this whole deep dive tell us about the trade-offs we're always making in technology? Hmm. Interesting angle. Like what? Well, think about it. We're constantly balancing these really rich, powerful features against, you know, demanding resource requirements. Wow. Or we're balancing absolute rock solid data integrity against maybe simpler ease of use. Yeah. Feature creep versus simplicity. Power versus well, overhead. Exactly. How do these little micro decisions, like picking a file system for your home server, how do they actually reflect these bigger principles of system design? Maybe principles that apply elsewhere in your job or other projects. It's just... Something interesting to mull over, perhaps, long after you've clicked next on the Proxmox installer.